The bread of life today will come from Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 46. Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 46, and I'll read for us. And then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. And he went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said, and said to Peter, So you men could not keep watch with me for one hour? Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again a second time and prayed, saying, My father, if this cannot pass away unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them again and went away and prayed a third time, saying the same thing once more. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. Behold, the one who betrays me is at hand. This is the word of God. Amen. Today is the fifth day of the Passion Week, and it is the day of agony. Jesus, in the Garden of Gethsemane, prayed. In our main scripture text in Matthew chapter 26, verse 38, when we see there, he says, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. And that's the confession that Jesus makes. And that is why we call it the day of agony. This is the day that Jesus endured the most amount of agony. Today, Jesus, before he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, had the Passover meal. There's an amazing redemptive historical secret hidden here. Jesus, as the Passover lamb, came to take upon the sins of all man. In John chapter 1, verse 29, it says, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Also, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, it says that Jesus Christ was our Passover lamb who was sacrificed. Also, Jesus, as the firstborn of all the children of God, died on the cross on their behalf. In Romans chapter 8, verse 29, and also in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6, when we look there, it says, Jesus is the first, firstborn of all firstborns. In this dawn, service, well, let's examine the footsteps that Jesus took today. First point, Jesus washed the feet of the disciples. On this Thursday, Jesus washed the feet of the disciples. In John chapter 13, verse 5, when you look there, then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet. Judas Iscariot already made the decision to betray Jesus and came into agreement with the chief priests and the religious leaders and had 30 pieces of silver with him. 
But Jesus understood this fact and also washed the feet of Judas Iscariot. This is the unchanging love of Jesus and shows the love that he had for them until the very end. In John chapter 13 verse 1, it says, Jesus, knowing that his hour had come that he would depart out of this world to them, he loved them to the end. Beloved saints, if it's us, if that person is trying to kill me and I'm being taken away to my death, would I wash that person's feet? We humans cannot follow in this manner. Uh, and this is the love that Jesus, Jesus displayed. But after Jesus washed the feet of the disciples, in John chapter 13, verse 14, this is what he said. If I then, the Lord and the teacher, washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Today, he is telling us that we must wash, wash each other's feet. But yet we step on other people. We want to be able to crush another person and step on them so that we can ascend. But look at our Lord. He says, it is right for you to wash each other's feet. In John chapter 13, verse 15, He's, Jesus said, For I gave you an example that you also should do as I did to you. Jesus set the example. If that's the case, then we have to follow in that example. Beloved saints, in the year 2020, today on the day of agony, let us follow in Jesus' example and wash each other's feet and let us carry out this attitude of servitude and I pray these blessings upon all of you in the name of the Lord. Secondly, He gave bread and wine at the Last Supper. Jesus had the Last Supper with His disciples. He broke the bread and gave the wine to them. What is this meaning? Little point number one, the bread, the bread is the body of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 26, when you look there, Jesus took some bread and after blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body. Just as he broke the bread, Jesus' body, as it was hung on the cross, his entire body would be scourged and his hands and his feet would be nailed to the cross. And this is what this reveals. Secondly, the wine that was in the glass is the blood of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 27, and when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink from it, all of you. In verse 28, for this is my blood of the covenant. Jesus' blood is the blood that must be poured out for the covenant of many, for many people. Beloved saints, He who died on the cross in our stead, without the atonement of Jesus on the cross, we could not receive the forgiveness of sins. Even if our hands commit a sin and even if we cut it off with the saw, because our hand sin and if we burn it up and throw it into the Pacific Ocean, our sin does not disappear. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, it says that in Him we have redemption through His blood and the forgiveness of our trespasses. Beloved saints, if we depart from the blood of Jesus, there is no redemption for us. The blood of the cross of Jesus Christ 
leads us to the eternal victory. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, it says that he triumphed over them through the blood. No matter how rampant the coronavirus may be, it cannot overcome the blood of the cross. The blood of the cross destroys all viruses. Today, in this time of difficulty, let us hold on to the blood of the cross of Jesus and receive the eternal victory. And I pray these blessings upon all of you in the name of the Lord. In conclusion, Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. The Garden of Gethsemane is to the west of the Mount of Olives. And that means to uh, pour out. This is where you squeeze the olives. And so the Lord, who would take upon the sins of all mankind, would squeeze and pour out his entire self in prayer. In Luke chapter 22, verse 44, when you look there, Jesus prayed fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling down to the ground. Jesus, in the Garden of Gethsemane, prayed three different times. The first, when he prayed, he rebuked his disciples. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 40, you men could not keep watching with me for one hour? Jesus prayed while his sweat fell like drops of blood to the ground, but his disciples were falling asleep. And so Jesus rebuked them by saying, you could not even keep watch with me for one hour. The second time, Jesus went to pray and then came to his disciples. And at this, Jesus was silent. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 42 through 43 record this. Also in Mark chapter 14, verse 40, when you look there, in Mark chapter 14, verse 40, it says, when he came back, he, found, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They slept before, but now they're sleeping again. They did not know what to say to him. And that's the word that is being given to us. The third time when he prayed, after Jesus prayed, he returned to his disciples and said, Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is being betrayed into the hand of sinners. And that's what he had said. And Matthew chapter 26, verse 45 uh, was where he spoke these words. Beloved saints, when we look at Jesus and look at the disciples here, Jesus, who had an anticipation for his disciples, that heart, we can see how it, con how it was uh, crumbling because the disciples needed to be the boundary for Jesus. They needed to be the shield for Jesus. And how wonderful would it be if they had been able to do that? But the disciples were all asleep. And there was no one that could be the shield for Jesus. There was no one that could be the boundary for Jesus. And Jesus' anticipation, desire for his disciples continued to crumble. Beloved saints, we have to live a life of being able to answer the anticipation that Jesus has, the expectation. If we are unable to do that, Jesus can only groan. 
Let us deeply engrave this word upon our hearts and for the remainder of our lives. Let us not live a life where Jesus folds his expectations, but let us be able to answer the earnest expectation that our Father has of us. And let us be able to live out the, the, live this way for the remainder of our lives. And I pray these blessings upon all of you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Father God, on this Thursday, on the day of agony, our Lord broke the bread and gave the cup with the wine. This bread is my body and this cup is, the, is my blood which will be shed for many for the covenant. And that's the words that he spoke. Our Lord shed his blood for us. The Lord, it, as he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, the disciples needed to be the shields and the boundaries for Jesus. And that was the expectation that he had, but that expectation continued to crumble and be folded. Father God, there are many expectations that you have for us. Is my life able to answer the expectation that the Lord has for us? Father, please forgive us of our sins for the remainder of our lives. May we be able to answer the expectation that our Father has for us. May the Lord not fold that expectation, but may we be able to live so that that will come to fruition. We believe that you have answered all of our prayers and we pray in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. Amen. At this time, the coronavirus, let us pray that it will come to a halt from spreading. The entire world uh, 50,000 people have died and over uh, many hundreds of thousands more have been infected with the virus. Let us pray also that on April the 12th, on Resurrection Sunday, that all of our saints will be able to prepare our offerings of thanksgiving and come to pray to the Lord. And also through the general election on April the 15th, may the lamentations and the sadness and the heartbreak of the people of the country. May there be true leaders that are elected into these positions. And let's also pray for our own individual prayer topics. And after we earnestly pray, you can conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Thank you very much.